Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. We've driven about an hour away from Pittsburgh to go to Falling Water, the architectural masterpiece in the Laurel Highlands. Today, we're going to get a behind the scenes look from Falling Water's director, Justin Gunther. Justin, thanks for having us. How are you? Thanks for coming out. I am like pumped to be here because it's a Wednesday when you're closed to the public. So we've like got the place to ourselves. We do. That's a rare occasion. You said there's sort of like a few places that, that people don't always get to see on the standard tour that we're going to get to see today. Yeah, so if you kind of pretend you're being a guest of the Kaufmans back in the 40s or something, your chauffeur would have driven you down the driveway. You would have kind of seen the house emerge in the forest. You'd come across the bridge, and then your car would stop here. And then you'd get out of your car and then make your way to the main entrance of the house. And the Kaufmans always had a hostess at a desk. Is the desk still there? The desk is still there. And this crazy feature, there was actually a foot bath put in, which was the Kaufman's idea. So after being out in the woods picnicking or going to pick wildflowers, they'd come back to the house with their dirty hands and feet, cleanse in the foot bath before they went inside. Is that soap? Like soap, soap on a rope? On a rope. Soap on a rope, yep. Gives you some something to lather up with to get your hands clean. And this is probably one of the most important architectural spaces we have in America, if not in the world. Um, Frank Lloyd Wright was taking his whole idea of the open plan for living and realizing it, realizing it here in this space. I remember the thing that struck me is like, oh, it's like mid-century modern, but it's like way before mid-century. It's way before mid-century. So, you know, we're all used to now living in houses where the kitchen flows into the dining room, flows into the living room. Well, that whole concept originated with Frank Lloyd Wright. Wow. And I love that then right over here around the corner, there's like stairs to go right down to the the creek or the stream. Yeah, so I mean, the, the whole idea of this house is that it's a sculptural expression of a cascade. The design steps down through the landscape, kind of culminating in this cascade of water and the waterfalls itself. So he wanted these steps to take the family down to the stream to have that physical connection to the water underneath the house. And it also kind of serves as this air conditioning system to cool the entire architecture too. So if you if it was hot during the summertime and it was stuffy inside, you could open this up and then the cool air from the stream is flowing inside the house. Oh my gosh, you really you feel, feel it. That's amazing. Yeah. And then you get the smells coming up from the stream, a little bit of moisture. And the Kaufmans would have sat on that platform, let their feet dangle in the stream or even hop down into the stream to get cool. It just like slides so like gorgeously. And then it all tucks underneath, and then you can walk down to the stream. And so this is sort of like really behind the scenes here. Now, most people do not get yeah, to go down these most stairs. Most visitors go down here just for, for safety reasons. Yeah. But like, what a crazy thing just to have access to a waterfall from the middle of your living room. Amazing. And there's nowhere inside the house you actually ever see the waterfall unless you go out on the terrace here and peek over the edge and look down. But the sound is always present, so it's always part of the experience of the house. Lore has it that this was the Kaufman's favorite spot to picnic and sunbathe before the house was built. Oh, wow, because so, this boulder was just there on yeah, the side of the yeah. creek. And I mean, they could have shaved it off to level the floor out, but instead, because it's all about this intersection of man-made and natural-made, the boulder's allowed to emerge up through the floor. And you can kind of think of this as that fulcrum of the seesaw of the house, with all this stone weight back here, holding all this free mass up over the falls, all kind of teetering on this big boulder here, which is kind of a fun thought. Yeah. The Kaufmans had more than just four people for dinner parties sometimes. Yeah. So the sideboard here has built-in tables that can slide out from, from the sideboard. So this whole unit will slide out from the sideboard and you can see it has a leaf on it. So that there's two leaves that lift up and you can add it on to the end of the dining table here to have a bigger dining party. So how long would it get? Oh, uh, what, double, triple in size, depending on the size of the party. So we're inside the original kitchen of Falling Water. Frank Lloyd Wright did not design the cabinetry in here, but this is all high-end uh, St. Charles cabinetry from the 1930s. And some pretty neat features uh, that people might not notice just looking at things but you can see this perforated top to this cabinet here so there's actually a radiator inside this cabinet so were they like heating or keeping things warm up over there after you had a hot plate 
meal prepared, you would set the plates on this perforated top and then the radiators would keep the, keep the food warm. The Kaufmans had long haired Datsuns. So you can also imagine all these little Datsuns running around, right. running around the house. And they'd sometimes keep them um, kind of quartered off in the, the kitchen and, and the service side of the house. Um, these are the original chairs that were always around this table in the kitchen. And we had them conserved a couple years ago by a wood conservator. And the furniture conservator noticed the roughness of the bottom of the legs. And he's like, do you want me to repair that? And after we looked at it a little closer, we noticed it was teething marks from the Datsuns. So they were chewing at the legs of these chairs and we're like, absolutely do not restore the bottoms of those yeah. legs. Let, let, the, the, let that history of the dogs live on. And then what's that above the door? It looks fancy. So this is a call box. So beside every bed in the bedrooms and up in the guest house, there's a little white button. And you could press the button and that would enunciate down here to this call box and it would tell the staff what room needed service. One of my favorite spaces because of the view is actually the sitting room for the staff. Um, but when we walk into this space, look at this corner of glass that's just mitered together and then this view down into the ravine, just really stunning. Um, and the fact that this boulder just kind of emerges um, into the interior space to, you know, again, that whole idea of bringing outside and inside. Yeah, and I want to show you the basement, which is a space that most people don't get to see. I don't think I even knew there was a basement. Is there like a Pittsburgh potty down here? <laughs> there is a, a bathroom down here. It doesn't freestand in the space like a lot of Pittsburgh toilets. Though. So this would have been storage for the kitchen operation. And then there's just boulders here. Again, yeah, these boulders that were here on the site that the house is built within and around and on top of. And that boulder is actually that same hearth of the fireplace. Whoa. So this boulder emerges up through the living room floor. And then these are neat to see. These are the lockers for the staff. So each staff member had a, had a locker here. I think this is fascinating to see too. If you look up at the ceiling, so to pour the slabs of the concrete and, and the cantilevers, they built these wooden forms. Um, and this is actually the impression of the wooden forms into the concrete pour. So this would have been a plank of wood, a plank of wood, wow. and it left that impression uh, of the I mean, You could see like the wood grain in there. Yeah, so everywhere else on the house, it would have been covered over with stucco so that you couldn't see this right. impression of the formwork. One thing I've always noticed when you're at Falling Water is there's just like everywhere, there's just like water dripping over rocks, which is beautiful, but also must just be sort of challenging because it must mean there's just water seeping everywhere around the house. Absolutely. I mean, water is the inspiration for the architecture, that whole cascade idea of water. So that, but at the same time, the house is always battling against its inspiration. You know, the house has been fraught from the beginning with roof leaks and water infiltration issues, but it's just part of the nature of Wright's architecture yeah. and it's how he melded it to the landscape. Okay. Well, we were just walking along and we came upon Dale and you're I guess, sort of making falling water look good, right? Trying to keep it as clean as possible. Well, there must be some challenges to cleaning falling water versus, you know, the challenges of cleaning my own house, right? Yes, there is. You got to take care of all the collection and all the uh, artifacts and uh, uh, textiles and stuff like that. Well, it must be so much window cleaning because there's so many windows. And you also, you want those views to be like pristine and beautiful. Uh, do you want my honest opinion? <laughs> Too many windows. There is a lot of windows. <laughs> Let's go up and see where the staff would have slept. Yeah. All right. In the servants' quarters. And so what are these areas used for now? So actually, we use the original staff bedrooms as administrative offices. What I love about these spaces is Wright outfitted the staff quarters with the same amenities as the bedrooms in the main house. So all of the same built-ins are here in these spaces that the Kaufmans would have had themselves in the main house. It's actually my office. Gosh, not a bad office. <laughs> it's a pretty good office yeah. to spend the day in. Um, so this was designed because two of the staff were married. Oh. I believe it was the chauffeur and a maid were, were married. Um, so where this couch is today, there would have been two bed frames that came out for the married couple. Um, and then you can see the original built-in desk and built-in um, cupboard storage. 
wow, that is all original. And then this is a new desk that was put in just for the function of the office. But again, just like every bedroom in the main house had an outdoor terrace space, this bedroom did as well. So the servants had a had a terrace outside to enjoy. And this is the bathroom. Yeah, this was the bathroom for the the staff quarters. So would they have all shared this bathroom? They shared this bathroom. The original sink, uh, the original mirror with the um, fluorescent tube backlighting. It's funny. It's still the staff bathroom. It's still the staff bathroom. <laughs> And I love the, the the toilets, which are sunken down into the floor. So it's like the original squatty potty. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, it is. I mean, it's just like, it's a bathroom, but it's beautiful still. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you've got, I mean, there are tours all the time. People can go to your website and sign up and come visit for themselves. Absolutely. We have, you know, regular guided architectural tours. And then we do in-depth tours and focus tours if you want to see a little bit more of the behind the scenes. But, you know, this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site right in our backyard. So please come out no matter the season because it'll be a different experience every time. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for coming.